Just before this video starts, I need to have a disclaimer here that says this video is made for educational purposes only and do not try anything we talk about in this video at home. Yo, yo, I'm Drew and today I wanted to talk about white ash versus black ash because I feel like I haven't made a full length video about this subject for probably four years, maybe three, four years. I feel like it needs to be revisited. And these days I feel like there's a hell of people here that have just never even seen this proper discussion and have never actually seen a video going through all the talking points. So I wanted to make this now as an updated 2024 version of white ash versus black ash. Does it matter? And what is the difference? So one of the first things that usually comes up when you bring up this conversation is a huge misinterpretation from some people that think that we actually care about the color of the ash. People will say stuff like, well, I don't care about what color my ash is and it's like, yeah, neither do I. I care about how my J is smoking. And if it's black ash, my J is smoking terribly. That's what I care about. <laughs> so is all black ash bad and is all white ash good? No, not by any means. But I feel like we kind of have to split up that question into two separate things. So let's start off with the first part, which is, is all black ash bad? Yes. So here comes the next huge misinterpretation that usually comes from this conversation is that people think that when people say black ash is bad, they think that it literally means bad for you, which could mean that, but it's far from actually meaning that. So what causes black ash? Well, it could be something simple like the moisture levels, the dry, the cure, storage afterwards. You could have a nug that's slightly too leafy. You could not grind your nug fine enough, or you could even roll slightly too loose. And all of these could cause black ash and then cause your jade to kind of smoke terribly. Now there is also the side of things of, yeah, people could grow your bud with some terrible stuff. They could be putting bad stuff into it and that could also be causing it to burn black. You know, it could be stuff that is in their nutrients. It could be stuff that's spraying on the plant. It could be a whole range of things. But this is why I usually say, I don't care what causes black ash. When I say that black ash is bad, I'm not saying about it because it's bad for you. You could have some bud that on paper is the best bud of all time. It could say it's 28%. It could say it's got all these perfect cannabinoids and terpenes. It could look amazing. It could be grown textbook amazing and it could smell amazing. But if it burns terribly, it's gonna smoke terribly. And if it's smoking terribly, I don't want it. Now there is, I guess, a side of people that would be like, well, I don't care about that. I don't care about how my J tastes. I don't care how it burns. I don't care if I get the flavor from it. I don't care if I get the right terps from it. They just wanna get blazed. And if it's not bad for them in that sense, then that's fine. The, the bud is good, right? Which fair enough, if that's how you see it, that's chill. That's just not how I see it. I want to get the best experience possible out of my bud, especially as I'm a medical user in my normal day to day. And if I'm gonna use something pretty much all day every day i want to make sure i have the best possible experience of it that there is and for me that means something fully combusting burning white ash so that way i get the full flavor and the full experience of actually you know it being nice so a lot of people will hear that and then they'll take away that oh so that must mean that all white ash is good right no, no, far from it. Life does not work black and white opposites type situation, no. Uh, just because something is fully combusting and burns nice the whole way down, doesn't mean it's actually good. Like you could have something that still tastes like shit and has bad terps and is just dead and then fully combust and, and combust good. You know what I mean? It just does not mean that it's good. The best way I would compare it to is it's like having a car in a race, right? Like you can have the best car ever but if it hasn't got any fuel in it, it's not gonna go past the starting line, right? But if you have a Ford Focus and it has fuel in it, yeah, it's gonna get past the start line and it's gonna get to the end of the race. But it doesn't mean it's gonna win the race. <laughs> now, there are a couple key things here to note as well. When people are talking about white ash, they aren't necessarily meaning that the ash is like completely stone white. There can be speckles in it, there can be little bits in it. It really does depend on how fine you grind your bud as well. If you grind your bud really fine with a nice fine grinder, then generally you'll end up getting less specks throughout it and it'll be like one more solid piece of white. Now, when you have black ash, I would consider something black ash uh, to be black ash once it is over sort of 50% speckles. If there's more black than there is white in it, that is when you end up getting to the point where you start losing taste, flavor, it starts like really burning kind of jank. You might even need to relight it and it just starts going really terrible. Like anything over 50% is just not really it. I think one other thing to note as well, cause it's probably gonna come up in the comments is there are a lot of growers out there that swear by flushing being what changes white ash to black ash. And there are lots of scientific studies that debunk like exactly that but I'm not a grower and I have met many growers that swear by if they don't flush it turns out black ash and if they do flush it turns out white ash so who am I to say that that 
isn't their situation, but again, that is far from the only cause, you know what I mean? Again, like I said, it's usually going to end up being something to do with moisture content, uh, usually something to do with the dry or the cure or storage. Now, it can be a bunch of other stuff, and many growers will swear by it being one specific thing, but that's because that one specific thing that they swear by in their setup happened to be the thing that changed it to be white ash. Like, for example, if they had had everything set up properly, but then maybe one other thing was different, that one other thing would be the thing they would swear by that made it black ash, if that makes sense. Again, this is from a consumer standpoint. Like I said, I personally do not care what causes black ash. I don't care if the bud is good for me or bad for me. I care about how the bud is smoking. Ah, that's another thing we have to mention here, is that when people say something is burning clean, they do not literally mean that the bud itself is clean, like healthy for you or grown in a clean manner. That is not what they mean. They mean that the burn is clean. That's why they say it's burning clean, as in the actual act of it burning is nice and smooth and clean. I, I wanted to clear that up because sometimes I say like, oh, this is burning super clean. And people go like, what, Drew? You know, white ash doesn't mean that the bud is clean. And it's like, Nah, that's not what I said. I, I, I meant that the burn is clean, because that's what I said. But those are my main thoughts on white ash versus black ash. I would love to know your thoughts in the comments down below, because I'm sure I forgot to mention some stuff. But in general, these are my main thoughts on why I prefer white ash. Uh, I would love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments, and make sure you hit the subscribe button, because I'm trying to hit a million subscribers. See you soon.